how do you pick your talent? How would you pick the talent this year? Um, the way we do it every year, it's just by, you know, who we feel like listening to. That's cool. There's, there's no committee, there's no, I was surprised to see Nick here. Nick worked in the office for three months last summer. Um, so he knows it's a, it's a very small office, very small group of people, and uh, we don't really do anything scientific-wise. It's just like, you know, anybody feel like seeing the chili peppers this year? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's how do you get the chili peppers? I mean, they're not making a southern tour, are they? <clears throat> they were not. They, um, I think they have an affinity for New Orleans. You know, there's a couple songs that they cover, the Neville songs, and I think this year, we've, off the record, they're supposed to close their set with the meters. Um, they did a song on the first record, um, which they changed the chorus to, Take Me Back to Hollywood. Uh, it's the original meter song, Take Me Back to Africa. Huh. So we're working on that collaboration. Um, we got a little bit lucky with them in that their entire tour was in the Northeast and the way the business works and for a band like that you, you wait and you get the uh, Madison Square Garden date it's the hardest date, the hardest venue to book so everything's booked around New York so their weekend was the 21st which they thought our date was uh, so when I saw the schedule come out right before literally going to press I called the agent and was like, what are you doing? Why aren't you coming to New Orleans? And he said, I thought it was the 21st. He said, give me four hours, I'll reroute everything. So they canceled like five shows, hit Atlanta, and then are coming down here just specifically to play New Orleans. So It's terrific. Very cool of them. Has anybody ever figured out the, the economic impact of the festival on the local community? Um, that would have to be dealing with the politics side of it, so I avoid that like the plague. Oh, yeah. yeah. All I know is we sell out every airport, every plane flight down here, and every hotel. But that's still like a know, pretty significant impact. We leave that to the <coughs> administration to figure out. So when do you start working on the event? <coughs> I mean, do you start when you finish the one before the one? I mean, you right away yeah. into the next one. Yeah. Well, this year, you know, we. Essentially, we started working on the talent and the wish list, and then, you know, I looked at Jazz Fest and <laughs> what was the energy behind that, what would happen with Mardi Gras, and I thought both of those were positive for the city. So that's when we really pulled the trigger on mm. locking everybody in. How many people are involved in the operation? How many people does it take to put on a festival like that? On year-round, believe it or not, there's only four people that work on the, the marketing and the booking of it. Um, once we get to the event, there's about 1,200 people on staff. Where do you go about uh, finding 1,200 employees, you know, to just take a part-time shift or whatever? There's a uh, company that we use locally. Um, it, it depends on whatever city you're in. Uh, New Orleans is not a big union city. Um, typically, you would go to the union crews, and, you know, there are very crazy restrictions, like in New York. You know, you can move the crate to this point, but you can't actually move it off of the truck and they'll tell you how many people you need to hire. Um, that's when it's a, a little more difficult in trying to figure that out in advance when you're budgeting an event so you don't get hit on the backside with the big labor bills. In New Orleans, we actually just used a company called West Staff, which is, you know, they have a crew here. They do all the conventions, and you can sign up on their website. Uh, you mentioned before that you do the little bartering with the... Uh groups and things, uh, the companies that sponsors, mm -hmm. um, how do they deal with, with the copyrights and performance rate type things? Do they, company, the companies deal with that or they, do they sign a waiver for it or? You know, it's in, it's in our riders. Um, I learned the hard way the first year that I started this event that, you know, we signed all the contracts as CAA and William Morris and everybody sent over and we put everybody up in hotel rooms and, you know, got billed back for all their porn bills and all of that kind of fun <laughs> stuff that you, you figure out, you know, that you don't do the next year. So we essentially wrote a writer, a contract, our own writer that says, our writer overrides your writer. <laughs> <laughs> and we win. Um, and in that, there are certain media rights that they have to deliver to us to play the festival. Um, 
For the bigger bands, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and it's a little bit of a fire drill on event day, trying to get you know so and so cleared for MTV or cleared for this one, and it's more of a specific, you know, what are you going to use this for? You know, the the website of it, I think, you know, three years ago everybody was a little scared of it. Now I think it, you know everybody does get it and know that for the most part it's non-downloadable and it goes away in 30 days, so you know they're not scared of you know giving it to a PlayStation for, you know, a 30-day run on their website. When you get, when people come on the, sta on the stage or they actually appear, are all your I's dotted and T's crossed? You've got all the contracts together? Or is there always some things that, that don't get done? Um, on event day? Yeah. <clears throat> for the, the contracts are all signed. Um, you know, it's a, we've got it down to a system now where deposits go out at a certain time and the contracts are signed and executed. The biggest ones are the television, you know, content rights and specifically who's looking for those content rights. You know, it's a little bit of a fire drill because you'll have Radio Row that'll consist of, you know, 200 radio stations from around the country that are all looking to broadcast and looking for certain interviews. And you'll have the MTVs and, you know, believe it or not, MTV, MTV2, VH1 are all the same family, but they bicker and fight and they all want exclusive content and then there's AOL. So there's a lot of managing that process of who we allow to get to the right people to sign. And the way that we've kind of wrapped our head around it is created festival services where we shoot everything ourselves. Our production team shoots every minute. We've shot in every second of uh, Voodoo, with the exception of three bands, all of which Maynard played in Tool, Perfect Circle. Um, just wouldn't allow any kind of taping at all. But other than that, we've got every second of Voodoo covered. That's amazing.